hello beautiful people welcome back to my channel once again with another new vlog that is general microbiology part 3 so in this uh, vlog we are going to discuss regarding the collection and handling of clinical specimens so this is one uh, this is one of the important topic friends because in your prometric uh, this type of question you will be getting from your quality control this is related to your sops that is standard operate operating procedures so these questions what are uh, how you will handle the clinical specimen what are the precautions what are the terms and conditions you need to explain to the patients what is the rejection criteria so these are all related to your lab ethics sops quality control related questions so i just want to uh, go in detail with this topic so let's get started with our today's vlog before that please do like share and subscribe to my channel keep supporting me and let's get uh, so friends here we are going to study regarding the collection a properly collected specimen is absolutely crucial to quality diagnostic information and patient care and the next thing is safety before you face any patient the person who is collecting the sample uh, for his or her safety is very important and for that safety they should undergo with the universal precautions safety universal precautions should be followed throughout the collection and handling process okay now person collecting specimen should wear gloves mask and lab coat accidents or injuries must be report immediately so here friends as you all know we have to be very uh, careful with the um, sample handling and sample processing uh, with these clinical specimens and you all have to be uh, always with your universal universal precaution and the next thing is accidents and injuries these are nowadays very 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 common that an, uh, anyone can get an accidents and injuries here while you are handling a clinical specimens so before that if you got any accidental injury or needle stick injury so you have to report it immediately for example nowadays we can see the needle stick injury so uh, this the reason behind needle stick injury is you should never recap the needle friends okay you, you now uh, for this you can also get an prometric question that regarding true or false in the form of true or false you can receive a question from this that uh, re recapping needle is what it is true or false so you should never recap the needles because of this you will get the needle stick injuries and accidents okay friends and next is collection from various body sites what are the different kinds different uh, sites of the bodies from where we are collecting the sample we have throat we have nasopharynx sputum stool urine blood csf cerebrospinal fluid abscess aspirates or exteriates as well as synovial pericardial and chest fluid genital tract uh, collection is from men and women as we are collecting the urethral swab high vaginal swabs pap smears these are all un comes under genital tracts for men and women okay and uh, next is throat swab as you all know that we are collecting a throat swab sputum uh, sputum uh, it should not we have terms and conditions for various uh, collection of the sample just like if you are collecting the sample from the throat it should be from a uh, it should collected in the form of a swab and if you are collecting from the nasopharynx it should be from your both nostrils okay as influenza a and b influenza virus a and b we are collecting the nasopharyngeal swab and for streptococcus we are select uh, selecting it collecting it from throat and for sputum we are collecting an early morning sample without saliva we are taking only sputum okay so these are next is stool we are collecting the stool for different uh, types of uh, stool examination like helicopy h pylori helicobacter pylori okay rotavirus adenovirus and amoeba histolytica these all are and urine as you all know urine we have random urine okay urine examination urine culture uh, uh, this is the one and for blood also we are having all the blood tests biochemistry hormone serology we are collecting the blood and for cerebrospinal fluid we are not collect we are not the one who are collecting the cerebrospinal fluid it is only collected by the physician and one thing you have to remember regarding the cerebrospinal uh, fluid is that it should never be refrigerated 
okay friends and as well as the synovial joint uh, synovial uh, joint fluid pericardial fluid chest fluid and genital tract as just now i told that we have men and women we are having high vaginal swab urethral swab from men and women pap smear swab so these are the various body sites and collections we are collecting and we have a different criteria for uh, for all the various body sites of a specimen collection okay and how you now you are handling the specimens so for handling the specimen friends transport is also a necessary one right transport anaerobic specimen as you all know just now we have discussed regarding the aerobic and anaerobic uh, obligates right so anaerobic specimens must be transported in an ana anaerobic transport system so most of the specimen can be held at 2 degree centigrade to 8 degree centigrade while we are transporting the specimen uh, now this is regarding the handling of your specimen now we are going to discuss regarding the specimen rejection criteria so in this criteria you have to be very thorough what are the different kinds of situation where you are getting a specimen rejection criteria it can be from pre analytical analytical and also from the post analytical but mostly you will get the specimen rejection uh, criteria from the pre analytical pre analytical in uh, means uh, you know a different patient name with different uh, your hospitals they are having a file numbers you know a different mobile number so in this in this cases uh, mostly the specimen reject criteria they will be arising from pre analytical uh, this one okay now specimen rejection criteria rejection criteria should be a part of written policy of every clinical laboratory and processing and culture of inappropriate specimen leads to increased cost and misinformation okay because of this what happen uh, this one a specimen they will leads uh, leads to increased cost and also regarding to the uh, misinformation so the following situation we have a different kinds of specimen rejection criteria so some of the uh, specimen rejected criteria we are going to discuss are first is specimen received in non sterile or contaminated containers include those in which the specimen has been leaked out what happen mostly we will receive a container uh, we will receive a urine which is not in a, a sterile container okay uh we have to receive a, a urine stool any sample in a sterile container if you if it if you receive it in non sterile container it is a it it could be a mark of specimen rejection uh, rejection criteria okay and sometimes what happen in our bio hazard covers you will find the urine is leaked if you find the urine in a leaked position then it it is also it is also comes under the specimen rejection criteria and the next is specimen contaminated with barium or other foreign substances and one more is culturing of foley catheter tips some of them are collecting the urine from the foley catheters which is not acceptable as it can it as it can be a contaminated urine okay and the saliva instead of sputum maximum we are asking the patient to uh, get the sputum but most of most of the patients they are bringing the saliva they don't know the difference between saliva and the sputum in many cases so instead of uh, sputum if you re if you receive saliva it is it is also comes under the specimen rejection area and unrefrigerated urine specimen to hours or most post collection so these are some of the important criteria rejection criteria where you will find so this is regarding your collection handling transport and uh, what are the different kinds of specimen rejection area so this can be very helpful in your quality control lab ethics in your sops also if you find any question in your prometric so these are these are some of the basic things okay so i hope you like it please do like share